Hello, I'm Norbert Gleich, MD, the Medical Director of CHR. I welcome you today to one of our debates. Uh, in addition, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you today Pasquale Patrizio, MD, MS, uh, who is the director of the IVF program uh, at Yale University and recently also came as a consultant on board here at CHR. In other words, he is now helping okay. us out. Uh, uh, Pasquale is one of the leading uh, fertility specialists in the country. Uh, he is known worldwide uh, for expertise uh, in IVF and in other uh, related areas. And it is a real honor uh, not only to have him here today uh, for this discussion, but uh, to have him as part of the larger uh, CHR family. Our discussion today is about the routine use of blastocyst stage culture in IVF. And not only is this a uh, quite important issue, uh, because increasingly IVF centers have been culturing every patient uh, to blastocyst stage, um, but it also is a very good example about how we here at CHR work. Uh, and by that I mean it is uh, a constant updating of practice. And uh, this updating of practice is the basis of constant discussions of what we have learned, not only from what uh, our own research shows, but what the literature teaches us. And uh, when you compare how uh, we practice at CHR today and look back only three or four years, there are dramatic differences. And if you had told me five years ago that we are doing certain things uh, that today have become routine, I would probably not have believed it. So today's discussion addresses such a difference of opinion because Dr. Patrizio and I do not completely agree on how much blastocyst stage culture there should be in IVF programs. And again, the principal question here is not should blastocyst stage culture be used because it obviously has certain clear advantages. The question is when should it be used? In whom should it be used? Should it be used in everybody? And so, Pasquale, it's a real pleasure having you here today. And why don't you tell our audience uh, what your thinking is about the use of blastocyst stage culture? Maybe sure. you start by, by telling them a little bit what blastocyst sure, stage sure, culture sure, sure. entails. First of all, thank you for having uh, this debate today with me. And uh, also, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to consult and research with your group, which is doing fantastic work. So. The, the question uh, uh, before us uh, uh, today is uh, what is a blastocyst culture and why I am in favor of uh, doing as much as possible blastocyst embryo transfers as opposed to when an embryo is only three days old. So today with the improvement in the uh, laboratory uh, culture methodologies, embryos are safely grown for up to five days or even six days and, uh, and therefore in the absence of uh, extremely uh, validated method of selecting embryos, I do believe that allowing an embryo to grow up to five days is a kind of a natural way of uh, self-selection and the best embryo, the best fit embryo will grow and therefore we have the opportunity to uh, to uh, select an embryo that has grown to blastocyst which could have not grown to blastocyst because just by nature not every single embryo that we provide to patients are going to become a blastocyst. So if I had to choose that same embryo on day three I may have not been able to do such a choice. So by allowing the growth to two more days from day three to day five I will have a better opportunity to select the embryo that is probably going to become a, uh, an implanted embryo and therefore a live birth. So what you are basically saying is that you believe that an embryo 
that doesn't make it in the laboratory to day five or day six, also in the uterus will not lead to a pregnancy if transferred on day three. That's, uh, that's my assumption. And uh, I wish there would be a way to study this question uh, in a much more precise and objective way. But uh, basically, yes, if an embryo does not make it in the lab for uh, two more additional days of growth, it can be a nice looking embryo on day three, but it may stop on day four or on day five, and that embryo will not ever become a blastocyst had that embryo been transferred on day three. That's my posit, that, that's my, my, my assumption. And uh, there is no, no question that, you know, we don't know for sure if that embryo that would have been left in culture uh, would have uh, stopped in culture, but would not have stopped if we had transferred that embryo in the uterus. We have a few uh, physiological concepts that we need, that those are incontrovertible, nobody argues about it, and these are that the embryo implants in the uterus when it's five days old, when it's at the stage of a blastocyst. The embryo does not implant in the uterus when it's three days old. So therefore, if we put an embryo in the uterus on day three, it has to float around for a couple of days and has to grow for two more days and has to become a blastocyst to implant. So I would like to see it, that that's happening in, uh, in, in the lab. And I also, I'm also very honest with, with, with my patients when I tell them, listen, we go to blastocyst. If there is a, no embryo for transfer, uh, then that cycle was not meant to be. So we can start soon another cycle. And, uh, and hope, because not every menstrual cycle, uh, not every stimulation cycle, a patient has an embryo that is going to become a live bird. So that's my way of selecting uh, embryos. It's just to allow them to grow to blastocysts. Yeah, but our, our difference is relatively small because I think in, in most instances you will be correct. But there are two arguments against that. Uh, the first argument uh, is that not every laboratory is the same. Uh, we know that, that in IVF uh, there are still better and poorer laboratories and therefore we are kind of imposing a uniform practice pattern on the field independent of the ability of individual laboratories to really culture embryos to blastocyst stage. There may be IVF laboratories that do it better and do it worse. Uh, secondly, I think the argument um, ignores the fact that a 30-year-old woman or a 35-year-old woman and her ovaries and her eggs are a completely different story from a 42- or 45-year-old woman. Uh, the chance of growing an embryo to blastocyst stage is quite good in a younger woman, and the older the woman is, the less likely will any of her embryos really grow to blastocyst stage. Now, one can argue that's also why in older women uh, there are fewer pregnancies. Um, but, uh, and this is my final point, as a counter-argument, there are some studies on cumulative pregnancy chances from complete embryo cohorts uh, obtained in one IVF cycle. And they uniformly have either shown no difference in cumulative pregnancy rates between day three and day five, or actually mild advantages in pregnancy rates for all embryos transferred on day three. Uh, so that raises also then an economic question, which is, let's assume for a moment there is no difference. Culturing everybody to day five is much more expensive than culturing only to day three. So why are we doing it? Okay, so going back to your point, I totally agree with your first statement that uh, not every single uh, uh, embryology lab can grow embryo to blastocyst the same way that not every single IVF lab is able to perform uh, proper freezing and uh, uh, rewarming uh, techniques. So we, I'm basing, however, my statements on, on uh, 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 excellent uh, top-of-notch uh, embryology lab. So, and having agreed with you on the fact that not everybody can do the growth to blastocyst, 
those that they do, I will still favor them up to a point, and I give it to you that if I have a patient that is uh, 43, 44, and uh, only has uh, one or two embryos uh, that uh, they make it to day three cleavage, I, I would be okay to transfer on day three. Uh, however, if that same patient has now been uh, coming back to repeat IVF cycles because she's not successful, I would probably tell her that, okay, the, what I will change is to go to day five. So we transfer the embryo, let's say, on two or three cycles on day three, because it was no, uh, not more than two embryos. But now we need to go somewhere, somewhere else in our assessment of your embryos. Now, we have no technologies, as I mentioned earlier, that can uh, um, effectively identify and select an embryo, because even the PGT technique has many limitations, you know, the pre-implantation genetic screening. I totally uh, uh, will not offer this technique if there is only one embryo or two embryos to biopsy. But having said that, so I have to do something different. So then I will offer a blastocyst culture because I see that as the most economical way, not expensive way, but the most economical way if you compare it to uh, the PGT, in offering an additional explanation. Maybe the embryo, yes, is a beautiful embryo on day three, but does not make it on day five. We transfer one or two times on day three and you are not pregnant. We need to understand if this embryo really has a chance to continue the growth. And if it does, there is a better opportunity. This was the cycle. This was the cycle in which you had produced a, a normal embryo. And the final point of your argument is that uh, you said that uh, there are no differences in the cumulative pregnancy rate, which means I do an egg harvest, I create embryos, and when I've used all the embryos produced in that particular harvest, I have no difference in pregnancy rate whether I transfer the embryo on day three or embryo on day five. However, this is true. However, if you do an embryo transfer on day five, you will have A, many fewer embryos left for transfer. And if you wait, if you have five or six, seven embryos on day three, and you decide, okay, let me do the transfer of two embryos, your chance of choosing the right embryo at the first take is much less if you have, of those seven, only two or three will make it to day five. And now I'm still going to transfer two embryos on day five. The chance that you will have found the embryo that in that cycle was competent for a live birth is much higher. So the yeah. cost should be less. You do fewer cycles. Um, this uh, brings me back to another very important point. I mean, uh, blastocyst stage culture was uh, first uh, suggested by David Gardner and Schoolcraft's group in Colorado, what, it's now 15 years ago, yes. roughly. Uh, and they did their studies in very good prognosis patients. They were highly selected. And after they uh, published their paper, uh, quite a number of groups tried to repeat uh, their studies in general populations. And they did not find those outcome advantages. I mean, there's not even one study that in a general unselected patient population has been able to show that improved implantation uh, potential that they reported after blastocyst stage culture. So what is puzzling to me is when and why have we witnessed this transfer from routine day three transfer to routine day five transfer? Because again, I have not seen a single study in the literature that has really shown that there is any outcome advantage in general patients. And I'm not even talking about the fact that there are studies that show outcome disadvantage, especially in older patients or patients uh, with low variant reserve who have, as you correctly stated, very few embryos, and we need to consider that in our decision-making process. Sure. So, so, so I'm really asking, how can we even believe that anything in IVF applies to everybody? And that's what, what it looks to me 
uh, like when when I visit IVF centers and I hear they transfer every, uh, they transfer everybody at blastocyst stage. So you're right. The concept of a blastocyst uh, a stage embryo transfer it's a, it's it's a concept that was originally proposed uh, about 15, 16 years ago. However. As you also pointed out at the beginning of our uh, discussion today, the, the uh, culture methodologies have uh, tremendously changed in the IVF lab. In those days, the embryos had to be taken out of the incubator, changing the media every day. Now, after day two, the embryos stay in the incubator without opening and closing, not touched, for the next, next three days. So this less disturbance is a much more favorable uh, methodology to allow the embryo undisturbed to grow. The second point is that, yes, there are studies that uh, have been uh, published uh, even uh, as of uh, late of last year, and one that I reviewed at the beginning of this year, where they have compared an, uh, blastocyst transfer versus cleavage stage, stage transfers in all the patients, not only the good prognosis. And the, the conclusion of, the, of one of the papers that I have in mind uh, is that you have a, a sooner time to pregnancy if you choose a blastocyst transfer than not a, a cleavage stage embryos. And in that particular paper that I have in mind, there were only 5% of all the patients that they considered across the old age that they did not have any embryo for transfer and they had an embryo on day three. So 5% of the patients, they were prepared to say, um, there is a chance that in 5% that you may not have uh, embryos for transfer. Okay. And those were the ones with very few embryos to start with. But so that, that tells me already that this is a relatively good prognosis patient group because uh, usually you're, if, if, if you really at least have an inner city population like we have here in New York City, uh, many more than 5% of your older patients will not make it to blastocyst stage. I think that we, uh, uh, we, ha we have a, a, a common agreement, or even if it's not yet specified or very well said, is that we have no uh, means to uh, uh, identify an embryo that eventually best has the embryo. chance, the, the so-called the, the one that is competent for implantation, like we don't. Yeah. So we don't, really don't have it. And unfortunately, we don't have, and I think we agree with that, with this other second point, is that we don't have a method to select the, the embryos, the best embryos. We don't have a, a method to know if that particular embryo left in culture with the most sophisticated technology that we have today, with the best culture media, the best incubator, we don't know if that embryo that has, would have been left uh, in culture is arresting the growth because it doesn't like to be in an incubator and we like to be in the uterus. So we don't have any, any way to, to know whether it is really the environment of the lab that is stopping an embryo that would have had the chance to implant had I transferred that embryo in the uterus on day three as opposed as I had le left this embryo to grow in, 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 in vitro. So these are two big missing points that unfortunately we, we make this, this discussion uh, up to a point we uh, peacefully uh, disagree but then at some point we also need to realize that we are short in getting to the answer and therefore to, to, to have a, a, a consensus in a way because we don't have the, the means to, to assess properly what we are trying to, to assess. I totally agree and I think uh, this is a good point to end especially since we agree uh, and and maybe as a concluding remark, it is also remarkable uh, that that we are looking for that one best embryo after a journey of three months of right. development, and we think that at that very last stage, the differences are really so significant that there is a best embryo. Maybe there isn't really a best embryo in that particular, in that cycle. particular cycle. Exactly. Right. Thank you very much for joining us and we're looking forward to seeing you, you. at our next debate. Thank you. Thank you.